Here's a quick workflow demo showing Apple's new Final Cut Studio 2.0 and Adobe's new Video Suite Production Premium CS3 working together. The idea of this quick short demo is to show how a Final Cut user, in this case starting out with HDV, can go ahead and capture clips, take some of those clips into the Production Premium using After Effects and Premiere and Dynamic Link to go ahead and add some After Effects style treatments to those clips render those back out in Premiere using Apple's Pro 422 codec, and then finally burning those to Blu-ray disc using Encore CS3. Let's take a quick look at what this might look like. Okay, before we get started, let's take a look at our Final Cut sequence settings. As you can see here, I've got Apple's ProRes 422 chosen as my compressor, and my pixel aspect ratio is already set up for HDV. My source today is a Canon G1, so that's going to use 1440 1080 in this particular instance, and I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And let's go to File, Log, and Capture. Go ahead and bring up the Capture window and hit Play. Give that a second to queue up the tape, and then we'll go ahead and just capture a quick piece of video here. And we'll give that just a couple of seconds to capture here. Okay, and I'll go ahead and just hit escape here, and we'll just choose a quick piece of video that we want to use. And in this case, I'll just go ahead and double click on this and go ahead and set an endpoint and maybe an out point here, and then just drag that directly down to the timeline there. So now I've got my, my clips ready to go. So at this point, I'm ready to go ahead and launch Premiere Pro because I've got my timeline set up exactly the way that I want to. Now, as I launch Premiere Pro, I'm going to need to go in and set up a new project. So we're going to go ahead and go to custom settings and our editing mode is going to be desktop editing mode which is going to allow us to choose one of the Apple codecs and for video rendering we're going to go ahead and choose the compression type Apple ProRes 422 to match what I already have set up in Final Cut. Now these codecs are only available if you already have Final Cut Studio on your system. Uh, these codecs only come with the Final Cut Studio and ProRes only comes with the 2.0 version. So keep that in mind that they are only available if you're a Final Cut user. So I'm going to go ahead and just save this out as an FCP to production premium project here and I'll click OK. That'll go ahead and set up Premiere Pro. And in this instance, I'm going to go ahead and just double click in the project bin and import one of those particular clips that... I want to start working with. So again, this is a clip that I might want to start to use to uh, to add some treatments to. So in this case, I'll just use this quick uh, clip that we captured. Now what I'm going to do is go ahead and launch Adobe After Effects and add some text to this particular clip. that After Effects is up, we'll go ahead and just start a new composition and I'm going to set the composition up again to match what we've already done in Final Cut and Premiere which is a 1440-1080 and we'll go ahead and just make sure HDV is chosen for the pixel aspect ratio and I'm just going to set it to five seconds for its duration and I'll go ahead and type in some quick text here And let's go ahead and center this a little bit. And at this point, I'm going to go ahead and just save this out just in case I need to use this later. And now let's go ahead and drag this composition over to Premiere Pro. And I'm going to just simply click on the composition, click on the Apple tab key to bring up the task manager here, and then go over to the Premiere icon and then drag that right into the project bin. And you'll notice that the composition comes up live. I'm going to go ahead and just drag this directly out. And at this point, I can see my text very easily. Now, what I might want to do is go ahead back over to After Effects. Let's go ahead and add some treatments to that. First of all, what I want to do is go ahead and make this just a tad bit larger. So I'll make my text a little larger. And let's go over to our Browse Presets. 
and I'm going to go ahead over to text and let's take a look at some of the new 3D text that we've got. And I'm going to go ahead and use this 3D random tumble here. Now I'll go ahead and play that back and just see if that looks pretty good. That looks pretty good to me. Now at this point, I've got everything I need. I'm going to go back over to Premiere Pro and then just see how that plays back. That looks pretty good. Now the only thing I don't like is I don't like the text is sitting right in the middle of the screen. So I'm going to jump back over to After Effects for a second and just lower this back down. And then jump back over to Premiere and then make sure that that's in exactly the right place. So that looks great. Now at this point I've got the clips where I want them. I'm going to go ahead and export this back out as a QuickTime movie. And in this case, I'm going to click on my settings, go to video. I'm going to keep it as Apple ProRes 1440. It's got all the correct settings that I need. Go ahead and click OK. And I'm going to go ahead and just type this out, give it a quick name, and we'll stick that on the desktop. Give it just a few seconds to render. It actually renders fairly quickly. Well, if that's done, let's jump back over to Final Cut. Let's go ahead and import that clip, which should be sitting out on my desktop. And I'll just go ahead and make sure that's the right clip. That looks good. And let's go ahead and just delete this one clip sitting on the timeline that we know we want to replace. And we'll just drag this right in there and that should actually give us the clip that we've been working with and I'll go ahead and just play this out that looks good okay so we can see that our action is exactly what we want okay now at this point I might want to go in and just look at some of the video and see that okay well I want to go ahead and delete this particular clip maybe make an adjustment we can also go in and make, you know, final adjustments, like maybe there's some sort of uh, template I want to use that's inside of uh, a Final Cut. I'll go ahead and just add a lower third template here. Give that a second to put that together. All right, here it is. And I'll just go ahead and sort of put that right, uh, right down at the end. So now I've got just another uh, fly-in title there, just one that Final Cut provided. So now I've got some After Effects stuff and I've got some additional Final Cut treatments as well. The last step is to go to Export QuickTime Movie and make sure you have Make Movie Self-Contained uh, unchecked. And I'm gonna go ahead and just render this out as a QuickTime Reference Movie. So I'll just call it QT Reference Movie and go ahead and use my current settings and I'll save that out and we'll give that just a few seconds to render Now that that's done, I'm going to go ahead and launch Adobe Encore CS3, and we'll go ahead and get the Blu-ray project set up. Okay, the first thing you're going to want to do when Encore CS3 comes up is make sure you've got your settings uh, set for the new project. So we're going to go ahead and make Authoring Mode Blu-ray, make sure your dimensions are set to 1440 1080 again matching your your camera specifications i'm going to go ahead and set my codec to h264 for uh, high quality and i'm going to go ahead and just call this uh, blu-ray disc and say okay and we'll give encore just a second to set itself up as well and at this point, I'm going to double click in the bin project window and let's go ahead and grab this 